Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. February 11th, John Clough. On this date, in 1858, Clough was baptized into the family of Christ. He grew up to be an American scholar and farmer and then a missionary to South India. In 1877 and 1878, Clough worked tirelessly in famine relief work and with the Angol Mass Movement, a welcoming into the body of Christ of people who have been outrageously oppressed by the religious, social, economic, and moral standards and customs of India. These are outcasts who are not allowed to enter the village, nor to worship in the village temple, nor to send their children to the village school. They are not even allowed to drink from the village well. During one six-week period in 1878, Clough and his assistants baptized nearly 9,000 members of the Madiga community. He focused on villages, and he encouraged people ready to convert to Christianity to wait until some friends or a family member were ready to come too, that they might go through life as Christians in a community of Christians, though small. The churches he planted were served by pastors from among the native people, and Clough did all he could to provide ongoing support for the many, many new believers. When God wants to free a people, a famine may be the way out. In 1865, John Clough and his family arrived in Nalor, South India. Clough, who was charismatic and friendly, soon befriended the Brahmin, the highest ranking members of the Telugu society. The Brahmin consisted of priests and scholars whose religious conviction was to never kill a living thing. Soon, one of the priests was baptized as a Christian, and Clough hoped to lead many more to Jesus. In the area, there lived another group of people, the Madiga. They were poor Aboriginal outcasts of the Telugu society and leather workers by trade, and the Brahmins despised them. But now, the Madiga were coming to Clough, and they too wanted to be baptized as followers of Jesus. But the Brahmin gave Clough an ultimatum. If he baptized the despicable Madiga, the Brahmins would no longer associate with him. Clough didn't want to offend the Brahmins, nor could he turn away from the Madiga. He prayed about his dilemma for a long time. And then the Lord spoke to him from 1 Corinthians 1.27. God chose the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. Clough recognized that the Madiga represented the foolish things of this world and that God loved them and had chosen them for his purposes. So he went ahead and baptized them. Deeply offended, the Brahmins wanted nothing to do with Clough's God from that point onward. Over the next 10 years, Clough devoted himself to telling the Madiga about Jesus. He planted churches, built schools, and raised up Madiga believers as preachers and evangelists. Through Clough's labors, several thousand Madiga had come to faith in Jesus. The work was going well until 1876 when the Great Famine struck. A severe drought in the Deccan Plateau ruined most of the crops that fed South India, and now millions of Indians were starving. To get food supplies across to South India faster, the British government decided to extend the Buckingham Canal by another five miles. A huge workforce was needed, and their salaries would be paid in food rations. At this point, Clough could have given up and gone home to America. But instead, he accepted a contract from the British government and built a three-mile section of the canal. To accomplish this, he recruited thousands of starving Madiga. In return for their hard labor, he paid them in grain, ensuring their survival. Clough employed 30 of his Madiga preachers as overseers for the canal workforce. Each man responsible for a hundred workers. Whenever the Madiga laborers sat down for a break, the Madiga overseer preachers would share about Jesus with them. And as a result, the gospel of Jesus quickly spread through the worker groups 
And in a short time, hundreds of Madiga were asking to be baptised. Clough told them to wait. He didn't want fear of starvation or cholera to be the motivation for surrendering their lives to Jesus. Two years later, when the famine ended, Clough summoned his workforce to meet him at a local rest house so they might reorganise for their next task. But when he arrived, he found a vast number of Madiga who still wanted to be baptised. And this time, he couldn't refuse them. On July 2nd, 1978, 3,536 Madiga were baptised. And by the end of the year, Clough and his companions had baptised 9,666. The Madiga community was literally turned upside down. They abandoned their old gods. And before he knew it, Clough's church had grown to 21,000 members. Take a look at the hard things you're facing right now. Could there be an assignment from God for you? When God wants to free people, a famine may be the way out. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real-life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.